Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be taking a look at NordVPN. Now just to be clear, this is not an ad. NordVPN asked me to evaluate their product as a cybersecurity professional. So I'm gonna be talking about VPNs in general, what they can and can't do. We will be busting myths and hitting facts and I will actually show you what your network traffic looks like before and after VPN, which you surprisingly don't see in most VPN reviews for whatever reason. So let's get started. Now, obviously, at the moment, NordVPN is a massive brand. They're probably one of the top VPN providers in terms of market penetration. In recent news, there was also a security incident a few months ago, which I covered. So if you want to look at that, you can do so. Link in the description. But looking at the product, it is quite mature in terms of the actual UI and functionality. You've got a lot of countries to choose from. They have an extensive network. Settings are fairly standard at this point. You can launch at startup. They've got a kill switch feature. They also interestingly have a cybersec feature which blocks ads and malicious websites. Seriously though, don't think of this as some kind of an AV filtering alternative because it's not. It does help. Sometimes it blocks a couple of ads and offers and things like that. But honestly, I've seen web extensions do better. So just think of it as a bonus feature. You've also got auto connect, of course, and you can choose the actual VPN protocol. Now by default, it uses OpenVPN. You can also use their own Nord links or TCP. Now, Cases where you might want to use TCP is if for whatever reason your network blocks UDP traffic. This might be the case in some universities or whatever, so you might be able to get away using TCP. You can also auto connect over Wi-Fi, so if you travel a lot and you use hotspots on the go, this is very important. We will talk about VPNs and security, what they can and can't do, so hold your thought on that. We've also got some advanced settings where you can set custom DNS servers if you're having a delay in loading. You can also use obfuscated servers and even opt for invisibility on LAN if you connect to some kind of a work or college network and you don't want to be visible. They've also got mobile apps, they work great. Now interestingly, I have an iPad, which is a tablet and a smartphone. And what I find with a lot of apps is they're not optimized for tablets. Not with NordVPN though, they are optimized for mobile apps. And in fact, their mobile apps actually connect faster than the ones on Windows, so no issues there. Let's get to the facts. So as you can see, we have Wireshark over here, which is a network traffic analyzer. And I'm gonna show you what data over the network typically looks like when you're not connected to a VPN. So right now we're not connected to anything. I'm just going to head over and capture the packets from my Wi-Fi and we'll take a look at what we find. There's a lot of stuff going on, which is quite normal. Don't worry about this. You can see the protocol, you can see the length of the messages that are being sent. You can also see the source and destination IPs, which you can't because I blurred those out. We can also use a filter like HTTP and that will give you any HTTP requests that are going out. Now, obviously there's none right now, so let's make a few. So to start off, we can just uh, try going to Google and wait. Most websites are gonna use some kind of SSL. You know that, cause you see the lock on the browser and it says connection is secure. Now there's some websites, funnily enough, Oxford is one of them that don't use SSL. I went to a university with Sense that did this. Amazing, isn't it? By the way, before you start yelling, oh my God, you noob, I can't believe you're not looking at the actual login page. Those are encrypted. Like, I know, I know, I'm just making a joke, okay? It's So obviously, if we go into an actual login page, you will see that it is SSL encrypted. It would be really stupid if it wasn't. Now, if we take a look at Wireshark, you will see that it's now filled with a lot of HTTP requests, and this is all the data that we've been getting from the website. And all of this is there for anyone to see, anyone on the network, pretty much. So you could literally have a random person tap into your network and read anything that was requested from the website and that was received. If you look down here, you can see some of the data. There are obviously a lot of pages being requested. For example, here's the fav icon, then here's an image. You get the point. But obviously this is not of massive concern because who cares, right? This is public information anyway. And anything worth protecting is really going to be behind SSL online. Now, with regards to security in terms of usernames and passwords, you should be perfectly fine regardless of whether or not you've ever used a VPN. And that's because the website should be using SSL. If there is a website that transfers login data and doesn't use SSL, seriously, stop using it. But there's more. 
So if we go ahead and look for all the DNS requests, you can clearly see every single website that my computer is trying to connect to right now, including Slack, which I didn't even show you, right? It's just in the background, but now you know, because you've seen the DNS requests. So not only does this expose you in terms of all the websites that you visit, but also all the applications you might have on your system. As you can see, we've got all the individual websites like the staffadmin.ox.uk. Now you even know I use iTunes. It's okay, it's a mistake, don't look at it. <laughs> now I'm gonna show you what this traffic looks like after we use a VPN. Now obviously this is not same for all of them, but we will be testing NordVPN and seeing what it does. So let's go ahead and open it up. Let's go to Switzerland, because honestly, that's where I'd rather be. Now we're connected, we're good to go. So let's try and do the same thing over again. So I'm going to exit Wireshark because we don't want the previous data to confuse us. We'll go ahead and open up Wireshark again and we'll do the exact same thing. So we're going to look into the traffic going through our Wi-Fi. And now already you can see that this looks quite different. So we're seeing all this traffic, but it all says the protocol is OpenVPN. So let's see if this makes any difference. We'll go ahead and open up Chrome. Let's refresh these pages and let's see if we can find these now. If we look for DNS requests, boom, nothing here because all of that data is now encrypted. And if we clear this up, you will see that we're constantly communicating via the OpenVPN protocol. And if you look at all this data, it is just a mess. It is all encrypted and you wouldn't be able to decipher it. Similarly, you don't see all that data about applications that I have on my system. No kind of communication. There's really nothing you can trace from this. But wait a second, this has to be decrypted somewhere, right? How does the website know what you're asking for and therefore how does it respond to your requests? Well, that's because what's happening is this data is encrypted on my system and then sent to an intermediary server, which is operated by NordVPN, and then it's going out to the rest of the internet. So you can't get around the problem of the data not being in an encrypted state. It has to be at a decrypted state when it reaches the server. But what you're effectively doing is cutting out any kind of man in the middle attack potential to exfiltrate this during its journey. But wait a second, this data is going to the VPN server and they have the key so they can access it. And that is precisely where the problem of trust comes in, which is why I would strongly recommend that before you use any VPN, make sure you read their privacy policy. This is really the important contract you have with the VPN. They have to deal with the same kind of network infrastructure that your ISP does. The only difference is, well, the privacy. For NordVPN, they guarantee a strict no logs policy by an automated technical process and not monitored, logged, stored, or passed to a third party. Now this is fairly common. I think most VPNs will say this, but another important thing to consider is their location and the laws of the country because certain countries will require them to maintain some kind of a record of their customers, what they're doing, and that can easily take precedence over the no logs policy. Now in the case of NordVPN, they're based in Panama, which does not require data storage. So that's great. But again, if you're serious about this, whatever VPN you use, make sure that you're familiar with the laws of the country they're based in. Because if push comes to shove, that is what they're subject to at the end of the day, and there's no escaping it. Now, in terms of NordVPN, based on everything I can see client side, it does seem like they are fairly secure. Now, obviously, the infrastructure on the network side, there is no way I can do a security audit of all of that. It is endless, just the same as an ISP or any other major company. For example, if you had to look into Google and try to find if everything they do with the way they store your data on their servers is secure, that's a massive challenge. And I don't think anyone is immune to that, including VPN companies. That is not to say that they're not extremely useful in certain scenarios. I mean, I have to use one because I do malware testing and I can't have malware know my actual IP address. I don't want to be targeted by all the attackers in the world. And there are other similar cases where if you travel a lot, if you work in a sensitive industry, a VPN is pretty much a necessity. In some cases, it may be provided by your company. In some cases, you might want to use one personally as well. Now we'll also do a standard VPN test to see if there are any kind of IP or DNS leaks. So we'll head over to ipleak.net and we'll see what kind of data we can get. Starting off, it thinks that we're in Switzerland. Our IP address is this one. Clearly it isn't leaked. 
And if we take a look at the DNS address, it is a similar server in Switzerland, nothing linked here. If we were not connected to a secure VPN, you would see a list of addresses here like Google and stuff like that. There's also WebRTC, which you should be familiar with, which can leak your IP information. But clearly that's not the case here because we don't see our ISP's IP. Instead, we see this IP from Switzerland. So that's what NordVPN offers in terms of privacy. There are certain attack scenarios which can be prevented completely unrelated to login data since people always say, well, your login data is encrypted anyway. Yeah, well, that was never the point of VPN anyway. So the point of VPN in terms of security is only that it can prevent certain types of man in the middle attacks, hackers getting information about your computer habits. And also if you're connecting to random Wi-Fi hotspots, which may not be secure, that's where it can be really valuable because if you're connecting to your hotel's Wi-Fi and you get that prompt where it says, oh, insecure network, which you get for a lot of hotels, someone on the network could easily look at your traffic, which is not pleasant. So all of this sounds great, but keep in mind, this comes at a cost, which is why unless you're privacy conscious or you have a need to use your VPN, I wouldn't recommend using it at all times, especially if you're a power user and need all the speed you can get. You didn't think all that encryption and sending it to some random server and then sending it back isn't going to add latency, did you? <laughs> So not only does it add latency, I've noticed a significant speed drop no matter what VPN I use. Now this is obviously going to be subjective depending on your actual speed and the server nearest to you. But as you will see, so first of all, we've got a ping of 25 milliseconds and our speed is fluctuating around 226 megabits for download. We're also hitting what, like 125, 130 for upload? So these are not great speeds. I have a 500 megabit connection, and even with all the Wi-Fi drops and stuff like that, without a VPN connection, I can easily get well over 300 megabits. Now this is obviously very subjective. It is going to depend on servers near you, which is why, again, I would recommend that before you commit to a VPN long-term, you try it out for a few days, see if the speeds are good for you, because you might get a better result than me, you might get a worse result than me, or you might have a 100 megabit connection where the VPN isn't going to be that much of a bottleneck. So those are all things to keep in mind. And that brings me to a final point. VPN is a very commoditized market, which means most VPN companies compete on price. And sometimes they have to minimize their infrastructure costs to actually support that and compete. So while choosing a VPN, it's very important that you try it out, check out the speeds for you, make sure that the service is good where you're located. Because at the end of the day, I think that will be a very important part of your experience. You should obviously also look into the security and privacy aspects that I covered earlier. Now NordVPN and some of the other top VPNs also try their best to be as invisible as possible to other servers like Netflix, for example, so you can access region specific content and just be a digital ninja moving from place to place in the world and enjoying everything that's accessible there. Probably not the most legal thing. So I don't consider it as a factor, but if it matters to you, NordVPN does really well and you can usually access region lock content just fine, which you can't with a lot of VPN companies other than like maybe five. So there you go. Those are my thoughts on NordVPN. If you want to check them out, there will be a link in the description and also the pinned comment. Again, I just want to be clear, this video is not an ad, it is an independent evaluation. So if you would like me to talk more about VPNs and other such services like password managers or whatever, let me know in the comments down below. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. Check out the pcsecuritychannel.com. Never a better time to subscribe. I've got so much exciting stuff coming up. Can't wait to share. This is Leo. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, stay informed. Stay secure.